scenes as people take to the streets to escape collapsing buildings. Evacuations are still taking place. Police in Japan say hundreds of bodies have been found on the northeast coast as homes are swept away, including a passenger train, which is still unaccounted for. There are thousands of people, millions of people, on the streets of Tokyo tonight. All trains have been suspended. The official advice, if you're safe, is to stay where you are. But after the shock of this afternoon's earthquake, many people just want to get home. Fires rage out of control along the coast, including one at an oil refinery, as the country issues a state of emergency. Hello, good afternoon. Japan has been hit by its biggest earthquake since records began, sending a tsunami driving inland from the northeast coast. Police say two to three hundred bodies have been found in the coastal city of Sendai and many more people are unaccounted for. Tsunami warnings now cover virtually all of the Pacific coast. <laughs> The quake had a magnitude of 8.9 and struck at 2.46 in the afternoon local time. And this is the moment it was felt in an office in the city of Sendai. Well, the quake's epicenter lies 250 miles to the north of Tokyo. It triggered a 10-metre high tsunami. The wall of water has destroyed everything in its path, sending ships crashing into the shore, tearing down buildings and swamping large areas of farmland. Mike Waldridge now reports. The tsunami triggered by the earthquake sweeping towards land from the epicenter, about to wreak havoc along the coastline. It's now being described as the biggest earthquake in magnitude ever to hit Japan. In the tsunami's destructive path, cars, boats, even buildings, some on fire, debris of all kinds. The waves of muddy water broke over embankments, taking everything with them. And then they went into reverse, sweeping debris back out towards the sea. Here a boat in a harbour finds itself tossed about in a whirlpool created by the earthquake. The moment the earthquake struck, 2.46 in the afternoon local time in Japan. This is the local government office in the city of Sendai. This the offices of Japan's public broadcaster in the same city. In this supermarket, staff even try in vain to prevent items falling off the shelves. There were several powerful aftershocks within the hour. In a country all too used to earthquakes, the shock at the magnitude of this one all too obvious as people spilled out onto the streets of Japanese cities. People tried to comfort one another. Walking into the office from the balcony from a phone call and uh, somebody said quake, then it really kicked in big time. And uh, we didn't wait around too long before we all headed for the stairs and out of the building. We're on the third floor, so we felt quite a big shake, and then everybody was evacuated. Um, and I work in the downtown area of the city, so most people were evacuated and just on the streets, and all the electricity and gas and water have been turned off. An oil refinery burns out of control just outside the capital. Hours after the earthquake, there was a major explosion at a petrochemical complex in Sendai. Countless fires have been triggered by the earthquake. As yet, no one's even begun to assess the economic cost of the disaster. I offer my deepest sympathy to the people who have suffered the disaster. Regarding our nuclear power facilities, some of the nuclear power plants have stopped automatically, but so far, no radioactive material or radiation has been confirmed to have been leaked to the outside. An emergency disaster response headquarters has been set up with myself as the head. A heightened state of alert has been declared at this nuclear power plant and residents living around it told to leave their homes. The authorities say it's a precaution while the cooling system is restored.
transport has been severely disrupted too. This was the airport in Sendai as it became inundated. Flights have been halted elsewhere, trains too. Military planes were scrambled to help in assessing the damage. As the wall of water surged across the countryside, the authorities warned people to leave low-lying areas. For these people, it all happened too quickly. For now, a country with some of the most advanced measures in the world for coping with earthquakes is still trying to take in the scale of a disaster that's still unfolding. Tsunamis occur repeatedly, so please continue to remain in your evacuation venues. And for areas where the tsunamis have not yet arrived, there is a likelihood that very large tsunamis may occur, so please be very careful. The authorities say it's already clear that the earthquake has caused major damage across broad areas of northern Japan. And amid the rubble and the deepening sludge, the death toll continues rising. Police say between two and three hundred bodies were found in the Sendai area alone, and many people are missing. Mike Waldridge, BBC News. Well, as we've been saying uh, throughout the afternoon, we'll try and bring you as uh, many new pictures and images that we can as soon as they reach us here at the BBC. And we've just had some new pictures in uh, of uh, late night activity of people simply trying to stock up on supplies. Um, these are people that we're told uh, have been evacuated from their homes as a result of the threat of the tsunami hitting the coastline where they live. They're having to shop, as you can see, in darkness because as we were explaining a little earlier on uh, power supplies have been cut to significant areas of uh, Japan worst affected by this and quite significant crowds building up uh, but very orderly crowds calm crowds of people just waiting to stock up on any supplies they can overnight because of course as we've been stressing uh, Japan is nine hours ahead of the UK so they are in the middle of the night uh, at the moment uh, well, we'll continue bringing you those latest pictures, and actually let's bring you some other pictures uh, coming to us from Ofunato, which is a coastal area, um, and you will see, which has been devastated by the tsunami caused by the earthquake. We'll just stay with these pictures for the next couple of moments or so. But a wall of water some 10 metres high surged inland some 10 kilometers, 10, 10 kilometers inland, we understand, causing massive amount of devastation, literally sweeping up everything in its path, including cars, houses, and buildings. And we have some other pictures coming into us now from uh, a harbor called Hachinoe, uh, again uh, to the northeast of Tokyo, the area worst affected by the tsunami. And again, as you can see here, huge boats being swept along by the waves, um, water cascading underneath that bridge, uh, cars, and indeed some houses being swept away by the strength of the water. Perhaps these some of the most dramatic pictures that we've uh, shown you at any point during the afternoon. As we continue to uh, show you those images, let's uh, bring in our correspondent in Tokyo, Roland Burke, who's uh, there for us now. Um, the scenes that are beginning to emerge from the worst affected areas, Roland, are just extraordinary, aren't they? Yes, they are. Uh, a wide swathe uh, along the coast, uh, the Pacific coast of Japan, uh, has been affected. Uh, I think those pictures you saw of the houses being uh, knocked over by the waves, uh, that's an area where uh, the police say 300 uh, homes were swept away. Uh, in Sendai, in Wakabayashi ward in that city, uh, the police say 1,200 houses were affected, and that's where they found uh, two to 300 bodies. Uh, other things that have happened, uh, a train derailed, uh, and another train, uh, the, 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 uh, the control rooms uh, at the railway network uh, have lost uh, contact uh, with that train. So really what's happening is that uh, 8,000 troops, uh, as well as the local police forces and fire brigades, are fanning out over this area. It's a big area. Uh, in some places, the waters have reached as much as 10 kilometers inland, uh, and they're finding these places where there is great devastation. Uh, in Miyagi Prefecture, which is uh, the area that Sendai is in, uh, in one particular 
part of that, uh, that prefecture, uh, a fire is raging across a front of uh, several kilometers. Uh, so uh, just the scale is becoming clear as, uh, as the night wears on. It's now uh, one o'clock in the morning in Tokyo. Uh, a word about casualties, Roland, clearly very early to come up with any conclusive figures, but uh, uh, what are you hearing on that at the moment? Well, at the moment we're hearing uh, 500 uh, missing, uh, which is rather less than uh, earlier on it's reported that uh, perhaps 88,000 were missing. Uh, the news agencies here seem to be backing away from that. Uh, in terms of dead, uh, we're talking about 100 at the moment, uh, but just looking at those pictures, it seems pretty clear that, uh, that the death toll is likely to rise. Uh, in terms of help, uh, the Japanese have asked the uh, American forces here in Japan, there are 50,000 of them, uh, to help out. And according to the uh, Chief Cabinet Secretary, uh, one idea under consideration is for the USS Ronald Reagan, an aircraft carrier, uh, to be deployed uh, into the Pacific off the northern coast of Japan uh, to help out with firefighting with the rescue effort. Roland, thank you very much indeed for that update. Uh, Roland Burke there in Tokyo. Okay, and uh, as we continue to play you the latest pictures, um, I want to bring you just a couple of pieces of important breaking news um, coming out of Japan. Um, Japan's Prime Minister declaring a nuclear emergency after a number of reactors shut down after that earthquake hit the country. Eleven reactors at four nuclear power stations automatically shut down, but officials say one reactor's cooling system failed to operate correctly. Under Japanese law, an emergency must be declared if a cooling system fails. So that explains to us why um, this nuclear emergency has been declared. Um, and as regards the electricity supplies, um, it's understood that the earthquake cut electricity supplies to the power station, which is what we were saying with our nuclear expert a little bit earlier on. The backup generators did not come into operation when the outage occurred, and as a result, not all of the cooling systems were available uh, and of course there were quite a number of residents living near to the uh, Fukushima power station which is the one that there's been most concern about an estimated 2,800 residents within a two kilometer radius of that power station which is uh, about 170 wow. miles to the northeast of Tokyo um, uh, are being prepared to be moved from their the homes uh, half we're told according so, to these uh, one referring to a uh, dam that's part of uh, an emergency procedure the, uh, that's going uh, on uh, other things to tell you about uh, um, we're, we're talking about the tsunami and of course the tsunami could affect other areas in that in that Pacific base, basin and um, the first waves from a tsunami caused by that earthquake have now re reached the US mainland and um, that is along the Oregon coast. Um, we've got a quote here from a geophysicist at the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center in Honolulu saying that high water reached Port Orford in Oregon about 7.30 a.m. Uh, their time. That's at half past three this afternoon, so about 45 minutes ago. And officials along the coast activating warning sirens hours earlier to warn people um, to get out. And these pictures are the very latest pictures coming to us at from Japan, what happened, showing you the devastation of what happened when that tsunami hit the northeast coast and extraordinary pictures and devastation buildings just being swept up by this 10 meter high wall of water which surged inland, taking everything in its path, surging some 10 kilometers inland. And just to be clear about uh, what the Japan's Defence Ministry is trying to do to help the situation, uh, the result of which you're now seeing, um, the Defence Ministry says it's ready to deploy 300 military planes, uh, 40 vessels for what they're calling post-quake and tsunami relief. That's according to the Defence Minister, uh, Toshimi Kitazawa, who was uh, quoted on the Kyoto News Agency. Now, uh, David Cameron, we're told, is speaking in Brussels. I think we can uh, have a listen to him now yeah, as well, he speaks. Frankly, what is, can only be called barbaric acts, with Gaddafi brutally repressing a popular uprising led by his own people and flagrantly ignoring the will of the international community. And if we are to be clear, things may be getting worse, not better, on the ground. And let me remind everyone just why this matters to all of us. We should never forget this man's track record. This is a regime which for years supported terrorism around the world and which was implicated in the biggest mass murder ever on British soil, the Lockerbie bombing, as well as being associated with the deaths of many innocent people around the world. And if we don't sort out the current problems, the risk is again of a failed pariah state 
festering on Europe's southern border, threatening our security, pushing people across the Mediterranean, and creating a...